What's good, YouTube? It's Gary, just another fan TV. Back at you another video, and I want to talk about Tyler Lindenbaum in this video, okay? Ravens first round pick uh, this year. If you're rocking with the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, give it a subscribe. All right, so Lindenbaum was drafted by the Ravens this year, 25th pick. Um, but we got to discuss how we got there, right? Obviously, you had to trade Hollywood Brown for the 23rd pick. Then the Ravens trade back two spots, get the 25th pick, and Tyler Lindenbaum is now here. Now, initially on draft night, it was it was a, a obvious reaction to say you trade your number one wide receiver at the time and you don't replace him. OK, and it was, it was understandable. Uh, but drafting Linderbaum was the right decision and was the right move. I, I, I do think so. Now, uh, Linderbaum at 14, I think everybody in the race community would have been upset about that. But Linderbaum at 25 is a good value. And you already got. In my opinion, it's still in the first round at 14 in Kyle Hamilton. So, Linda Bomb at 25 was a lot more acceptable than Linda Bomb at 14. So, I think the Ravens had a really good first round in that capacity. Now, I saw an article on the Baltimore Ravens website by Clifton Brown saying that Tyler, Tyler Linda Bomb had pretty much no hiccups so far in mandatory minicamp and even um, rookie minicamp and even uh, OT, um, sorry, voluntary OTAs but, uh, prior to that. And we're talking about snapping the ball assignments, adjustments, and things like that. And Greg Roman ain't making it easy on him, right? He said that he wants to do everything at Tyler Bomb so that, you know, he's he's up at night shaking, thinking about it, right? And I'm, I mentioned that in a previous video before, but I'm bringing it back now just because I want to be more focused on Linderbaum himself. So, like I said, draft the 25th overall, considered a generational talent. Now, we're talking about a guy who has the highest graded um, career by a Big Ten center by PFF. Only two sacks allowed his entire career. And he's only allowed 19 pressures since 2019. Okay. And this is something that the Ravens needed desperately. It was a true uh, rock solid center. Now, you remember whether it was Cologne, McCarry, um, snapping a ball over Lamar Jackson's head. You remember that Patriots game, in, I believe, in 2020. We remember the Bills playoff game in 2020, which caused Lamar Jackson to get a concussion. Right. We, you never want to have where poor offensive line play causes your quarterback and your quarterback is about to be well paid. So we're talking about a guy who's going to be worth 200 million, 250 million dollars. Right. You don't want that guy going down because of poor offensive line play. All right. And so the reports out of minicamp was that he's sharp. He's, he hasn't missed a single snap and that. He's already well adjusting to the NFL level. Wow. And why does, why does this stand out to me? Because you have Tristan Cologne who was also there. Not, not to pick on Tristan Cologne, but there was also reports that Cologne wasn't the same. You know, he, he was missing snaps. He wasn't as sharp on his reads and his adjustments. So you have a rookie that's already, um, I don't want to say surpassing the level, but it's playing better than a guy who's been here for a couple years. I mean, Cologne's been here for, what, two, three years for the Ravens so far? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. Okay? And just to hear that he's been sharp throughout the week is very important. All right? In Greg Roman's offense, as much as we might not like Greg Roman and things like that, I'm not getting into that this video, but we know that smooth, sharp offensive line play is going to be a key factor. And now with Linderbaum under center, um, at, sorry, at, at the center position, you, you guys know what I mean, that the Ravens can do more things. They can pull the center. They can they can do more, just not just power stuff, but zone stuff as well. Now, with um, Linderbaum, one of his greatest assets is his athleticism. So that's why he, he can move around like that, um, which is why a lot of people didn't think that the Ravens would be targeting Linderbaum because he's more of a, I don't know if undersized is the right word, but he isn't your typical Ravens center. He isn't, uh, you know, 330 pounds, things like that. He's more close, I think, to 290, 300. But he plays. He has good play strength, and obviously, with the the low amount of sacks he, he allowed, he you know he does a good job at pass pro. Okay, so I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, the college level to the professional level is a big jump, so he has to get adjusted to that. But he's shown he can do it. And Big Ten is power five football, you know. So this is a it's a good level, all right. And um, we thought maybe the Ravens were heading to McCurry being the solution. OK, but when, you know, when they signed the contract, gave him that money, they said, oh, well, we're not drafting the center. So that kind of threw Linda on everybody's radar. So I guess that was a ploy by the Ravens to, to do that. But also having McCurry go back into that role of, 
he can play any he can play any and everywhere if somebody goes down. Okay, uh, which I think is the best role for McCarry playing that six offensive lineman instead of being a out and out starter. Um, but anyway, back to Lindenbaum. With him in this um, in this Ravens scheme, it now has to give Lamar Jackson some kind of ease of thought. And I was talking about his athleticism, right? Lamar Jackson even noticed it. I think Lamar might have thrown a, um, I think it might have been like a pick in practice or something like that. And he said he saw Tyler Linderbaum running down the field to, you know, to get the defender. Not really tackling him, there's no tackling, but to get the guy. And he was blown away by his athleticism. He said he's never seen a center run that fast. So that already lets you know that he's made an impression on Lamar Jackson. And then on top of that, if he's uh, snapping the ball correctly and properly the entire week, then that's going to make an impression on Lamar Jackson because now he feels as though he doesn't have to worry about that. Because there was a point, especially in that 2020 season, where I was worried when they were snapping the ball. And the Ravens are in the pistol, um, you know, 90% of the time, it seems like, you know. Um, so there are there is no direct handoff as far as you know, under center and things like that. So that ball has to get snapped. And I was worried when they were snapping the ball. But now I feel like with Linda Baum, that ease is, is going to be over me, other fans, and more importantly, uh, Lamar Jackson. So now he can read the defense, don't have to worry about the snap, and just play play ball. I think the biggest thing about the Linderbaum pick is, is uh, ease of comfort for the team. So that's why I really like the pick, because obviously he's a great talent. He's a, he's a good young prospect, but he gives the Ravens calm at the center position, even as a young player. Because when you draft a guy who has a kind of pedigree, um, you, you want him to, you know, ease the offense. And I believe Tyler Linderbaum does that. So when I saw this article and I, and I said it said it had no hiccups with Linderbaum so far at um, mini camp and throughout so far, I was extremely happy. So I kind of wanted just to share that to talk about Linderbaum because he might not um, get all the headlines because he's going to be a center, right? So center is kind of one of those positions where if you don't know the guy played that day, it means he kind of, he probably had a good game because he wasn't getting beat, he wasn't getting penalties, he wasn't snapping the ball over the, the quarterback's head. That means he played his role, his role well. I think Linderbaum's going to do that for us. So I just want to drop a quick video about Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. There's another fan TV. I'm out.